Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm the Nerd in the Street, and today we are taking a look at two ways to extract the album art from your M4A files. Alright everyone, I lasted about a week on GNOME, and now I'm back to KDE, and also using OpenSUSE, but that's a different story. Recently I've been playing around with different music players and trying to find one that works really well. Last week I made a video about GNOME music, and I mentioned in that video that GNOME music did not see the cover art for most of my songs. What I didn't mention in that video is that KDE Elisa also doesn't see my cover art for most of my songs, or it didn't before, whereas most music players did. Banshee always did, Rhythmbox did, Quad Libet does, and even just VLC and MPV, when I open up each individual M4A file, they display cover art. Now some people out there might say, oh, all those other programs are downloading them from the internet. But I know that's not true, because I've turned off network metadata access in VLC. I usually do turn that off, and like MPV, I don't think it even has the ability by default to go out and get album art from the internet. Not to mention that there are some other music players, like KDE Babe, that do go out to the internet and download album art, and I can tell the difference because sometimes the internet gives me different album art than are embedded in the files. So I can tell very quickly just by looking at it that all those other music players were actually getting the embedded album art from the files, whereas No Music and KDE Elisa, the two flagship music players for the two most popular Linux desktop environments, weren't able to see the embedded cover art for some reason. Now I discovered that both No Music and KDE Elisa will see cover art if you put a file called cover.jpg, a JPEG file, in the album folder. But what if you're like me and you buy all of your music on iTunes? It's DRM free. Uh, it is in M4A format, which isn't the most free format, but all of my music files have a 600 by 600 JPG image embedded in them. How do we get those out and how do we get those into a dedicated JPG file so that some of these music players like Elisa and No Music can see the album art? There's actually two different tools I found that can do this very easily using the Linux command line. I'm sure there are GUI tools available as well, but both of these are so simple, I'm just going to jump right in and show them to you now. So here we are on the desktop and we're going to open up Elisa. All right. And it's going to open up and import all of our tracks. As you can see, I've added most of my album art here, but there is one missing here. So before I did this and went through my entire library extracting album art for every single album, all of my albums in Elisa had this green circle in them. None of them had cover art, it was just a bunch of, of green circles, a bunch of generic CD icons. So the Ruby Volume 1 soundtrack, I need to go into the files. Obviously, Elisa doesn't see that they have album art right now. But if I open up a file manager and I go into the actual folder, here's my music folder, and here is this album. If I open up a song here, you can see right there on the screen, MPV pulls in the album art. So how do we extract this album art into a JPEG? What we're going to do is we're going to open up a terminal in this directory, and like I said, there are two tools you can use to do this. The first one is literally called mp4art, and that's the entire command. You can actually probably install this on whatever distribution you're already using. If you're on Ubuntu, the package is called mp4v2utils. You have to install this to get this command. Here on OpenSUSE, I had to install a different package called mpeg4ip, or I assume it's a similar package just called something different in OpenSUSE. But this will give you a tool called mp4art, and it's extremely simple to use. All that you have to do is run that command, followed by the application that you're taking the art from, followed by what you want to call the file, but do not put a file extension, don't put a .jpg or a .png, it will decide for you based on what the actual format is of the image that's embedded in that file. So this is all you have to do mp4art, input file, output name, enter, and you can see it runs, takes a split second, created file cover.jpg. It called it cover.jpg because I specified the name cover, and it was already a JPEG inside of that file. We're going to come over here, and in our folder you can see now, we've got cover.jpg. Like I said, it's a 600 by 600, which is what iTunes seems to embed in their songs. And at this point, I could now have that be detected by Elisa. Now we're actually going to remove this because there's another way you can do this as well. And this one actually made me laugh. 
uh, when I read this online. Aside from MP4 art, which is the tool just for extracting art from MP4 files, you can also do this with FFmpeg. That's right, FFmpeg is a program that you normally use to convert between different formats, like if I wanted to turn these M4A files into MP3s or into .ogg files maybe. And with FFmpeg, all you have to do is do the same thing you would normally do if you're converting a file, but just ask it to convert an M4A file into a JPEG, and then it will extract that JPEG. For an example of this, we'll type FFmpeg dash input, I for input, if you've never used FFmpeg on the command line. Once again, going to drag the file right in there, and then the output is going to be cover.jpg. This time, we will give it a file extension. MP4 art was made for this task, so it knows that it needs to pick out a file extension. FFmpeg is a much more broad tool, so you need to specify exactly what format you want. So we will run that, and it's going to quote unquote convert from an M4A to a JPEG, which normally wouldn't make much sense, but today, you can see it gives us a cover.jpg file, also 600 by 600. So those are two different ways you can do the same thing. And now if we close all of this out, and we go back to Elisa, now Elisa's not going to see the change right away, and in fact, even if we restart Elisa, it won't see the change unless we go in and delete Elisa's database, because Elisa, for whatever reason, as you can see if I open it up again here, it caches these things. So it's still going to think that there's no cover art. For Elisa specifically, we're going to open up a file manager again, and we are going to go to a hidden file in our home folder. It is .local, share, Elisa, and we are just going to delete Elisa's database. And I am not using the Baloo integration in Elisa. Not sure how that would work. Also not sure what you have to do to get GNOME Music doing this, but I'm using Elisa right now. So we're going to open up Elisa again. It's going to regenerate its database. And now if we search Ruby Volume 1 soundtrack, as you can see, now has album art. And I never knew that Elisa even had this feature here where it shows the blurred album art behind the uh, the title there. That actually looks really nice. That's a cool feature in Elisa. But yeah, I, I had no idea it did that because none of my stuff had album art before. So I highly encourage you to go through and do this. It did take me a minute to go through and do this for every single one of my albums. But, you know, now all of my albums have that cover.jpg file in them. So now I don't have to wonder, you know, is the next big Linux media player going to see my album art or not? I completely understand why programs were having trouble with the M4A files, because it is sort of a proprietary format. Even if it's DRM free, it's still not exactly an open standard. Of course, they were downloaded from iTunes, so I don't know what kind of protocols and standards Apple follows when making those files. But yeah, now I've got the cover.jpg, so it doesn't matter. It'll just pull from those now. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions about it, feel free to leave a comment down below or on the forums over at nerdonthestreet.com. For now, though, that's everything I had to show you today. I'm Jacob Kaufman with Nerd on the Street, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.